Hi, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to another COVID-19 debunking video. This week, I'll be covering Dr. Ryan Cole, member of the very terrible America's Frontline Doctors. You would think with a name like America's Frontline Doctors, they would be a noble, honest, science-based group, but the truth is exactly the opposite. The truth is that they were organized and funded by the Tea Party Patriots, a political group that recruited doctors specifically for the purpose of pushing a political agenda. And as a result, they have spread enormous amounts of pseudoscience. I've covered their members here on this channel before, and today I'm covering another one, Dr. Ryan Cole, who is a shining example of the pseudoscience I just mentioned. Let's get started. So this spike protein doesn't stay just in the deltoid. The spike circulates in your blood. It lands in multiple organs in the body. And you know what happens? That spike protein, without the body of the virus present, we did studies in lab animals. In the lab animals, just in, in injecting the spike, with no body of the virus, the spike induced the same disease as COVID-19 induced. Okay, so like other people who push COVID vaccine misinformation, he is blatantly misrepresenting the data that was gathered in biodistribution studies concerning the mRNA vaccines. These are studies where researchers injected rats with mRNA vaccines and then tracked where those contents went and where they were active over time. They found that about 99% of the contents and the activity of the vaccine occurred either in the injection site or the liver. And those are the exact two places we'd expect these things to happen because the injection site is, well, where it's delivered and the liver is where these kinds of things are broken down. The levels that were found in the rest of the organs were incredibly small and no organ damage was observed due to these levels. So it was deemed to be safe. Now, he also mentioned separate studies where the researchers observed that the spike protein alone could cause disease in animal models. In these experiments, the dose of spike protein that was given was much greater than what is found in the vaccines. And as we'll see later, the authors of this very study don't actually agree with what Ryan is saying here. So on the left-hand side, you see kind of in the corner of that upper grid and the bottom grid, these nice smooth lines. On the right hand side, this is what the spike protein, just the spike alone from the vaccine, is doing to the mitochondria of your cells. Okay, here's a really big tell that pretty much gives it away to any scientist watching that Ryan is a complete charlatan here. He never actually goes into any detail on any of the figures that he shows on screen. He gives some vague description, says that it's bad because vaccine, and then moves on. I found the paper that he took this figure from, and it is absolutely not showing what he claims it does. This is a study that looked at what happens when you take a pseudovirus that expresses spike protein from SARS-CoV-2 and infect hamsters with it. He's leading the audience to believe that this is human tissue that was damaged by a vaccine. It is absolutely not. Like I said earlier, the dose of spike protein that these hamsters are getting from the pseudovirus that is infecting them is much greater than what a person would get from a vaccine. That's part of what leads the authors of this very paper to say that vaccination with a spike protein would be beneficial to protect against the very damage they observed in the experiments. Ryan continues to lie just like this for the rest of the talk. A lot of people lack something called mRNAs, an enzyme that breaks down the RNA, so it may be circulating for even longer. Oh my god, no. People do not lack the enzymes to break down mRNA. Your cells are constantly breaking down mRNA that they're making themselves. Any scientist who has worked with RNA knows how fragile it is. That's because there are enzymes and environmental conditions that will break it down everywhere. And the mRNA in COVID vaccines is no different. Your body will have no problem breaking it down within a week or so. The fact that Ryan can make such a wild claim that some humans lack RNAs in front of a crowd of supposed experts and nobody calls him out on it tells you all you need to know about America's frontline doctors. They are just trash. On the left-hand side, healthy lung tissue, nice spaced out. See, this is what pathologists do. We look at all these cells all day long. It's kind of fun. We're nerds this way. On the right-hand side, see how much more purple and blue that is? That's all inflammation. Why? 
ACE2 receptors in that lung, spike binding to it, inflammatory response, immune system attacking your own body. Once again, this image is from another study that injected spike protein into mice. The amount of spike protein they injected was ridiculously high. Amounts that your body would never see with a vaccine alone. We know that the levels of spike protein that your body sees as a result of a vaccine will not cause this kind of damage because we've tested for it. No tissue damage or organ damage was observed in any trials of COVID vaccines. Scientists check for these kinds of things. None was observed. This only happens when you inject lots of spike protein into an animal. And you know what situation gives your body exposure to a lot of spike protein? COVID infection. So if you're worried about the spike protein causing this kind of damage in your body, get vaccinated. And this is science. Okay, here we go. That's all the blue on top. Those are brain cells. All the blue doesn't belong there. That's inflammation from the spike. <laughs> There's a reason he moved on so fast from that slide without bothering to explain any of those panels. This figure is from a paper that I had to track down where the researchers did an autopsy of a patient who had died of pneumonia a few weeks after getting their first shot of mRNA vaccine. This patient also happened to test positive for SARS-CoV-2. They ultimately determined that this individual's death was not caused by the vaccine or by COVID-19. It was indeed caused by pneumonia, and they concluded that the vaccine actually reduced the number of morphological pathologies that they were able to identify in his tissues. Doesn't exactly fit Ryan's narrative now, does it? But that's why he doesn't go into any detail and chooses to just lie about it instead. Where are the billions to do the autopsies? Where are the billions to prove the science? Where are the autopsies? I will go back. Crickets. They're not there. He literally showed a figure from an autopsy in one of his slides. And there are plenty of autopsies that have been done on people who have passed away after receiving a COVID vaccine. This is part of the recommended protocol by the WHO to investigate whether or not these vaccines have anything to do with these deaths. And the consistent answer is that they don't. There are only a few instances where the COVID vaccine has been linked to a death, and you heard a lot about that. This is something that is actively and openly investigated. This was the blood clot issue that emerged with certain vaccines. Specifically, it has been identified with the Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca vaccine that they are linked to very, very rare cases of blood clots. And when I say rare, I mean exceptionally rare. In fact, you are orders of magnitude more likely to suffer deadly blood clots from a COVID infection, or birth control even, than you are from a COVID vaccine. The fact that Ryan is lying so much about the science while pretending like there's some massive conspiracy to conceal a lot of information just really shows his hand at how much he doesn't understand about science and how much he's trying to fool his audience into buying his narrative. What we're seeing in the laboratory is the shots dysregulate your immune response. We have very important cells that keep other viruses in check, that keep cancers in check. There's a type of cell called a CD8 killer T cell. Well, there's a study out of Germany and the Netherlands that showed a shifted immune profile. And at the end, their conclusion was, we see a concerning pattern of the cells we normally need to fight off these other things. No, that is definitely not true. COVID vaccines produce a very robust immune response in individuals. This immune response includes production of a wide variety of T-cells and a very robust antibody response. Neither of these things would be able to happen if your innate immune function was hampered. And what happened to the concept of the Me Too movement? Believe everybody. What happened to believe her? Believe the story. What happened to believe anyone? Why won't they believe the science? They won't believe the science. Yeah, wow, so it's not often that I call someone terrible and a pile of human garbage, but in this case, Ryan absolutely deserves it. He is lying and spreading fear-mongering misinformation about life-saving vaccines that are desperately needed in so many parts of the world right now. So if you hear someone making the claims that Ryan is making in that video, now you know how to respond. Well, that's going to do it for this week. As always, the links to all of the science that I talk about in this video are linked in the description below so that you can check it out for yourself. And as always, don't just take my word for it. 
look at the data, and listen to other experts. In fact, you can ask other experts for free if you go to the American Society for Virology town hall meetings. The link to their town halls is in the description below. I highly recommend you check it out if you still have any doubts about COVID vaccination. And as always, I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe so that you can catch me next week where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.